This is a 2017 Chevy Bolt. And this is a GM recall. For those of you out there that don't know, this car has been recalled for, well, catching fire. So, GM this week came out with the final advisory, final again, I believe this would be the third final advisory, stating that they actually have a fix for this. Now, just like all you 50 to 70,000 Bolt owners out there have been waiting for, they've done it. They're coming out with the fix and it's gonna actually be what we've been asking for. It's gonna be full module replacement on the batteries. Might not be a full battery pack replacement, they're gonna keep some of the parts, but that's what we're getting. We are gonna get all the modules and all the batteries replaced. This is great news. As I stated in my previous part one video, their back order, their supply chain is getting fixed. It is gonna start rolling through. In fact, they said that they don't expect this to be affecting all the vehicles, but the ones that they are affecting, they're gonna replace all the modules. They told the dealers basically don't go ahead and schedule anything before August 30th. It is now uh, August 18th and basically they're gonna start rolling them in and doing the final remedy. So if you wanna learn about which of these vehicles are affected, where you fall into the range of the recall and whether or not you should be scheduling a visit to your GM dealer to get this fixed, stay tuned. And if you want to stay up to date on everything DIY, auto, and electric car related, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'm Johan, your host today, and let's get at it. The battery modules keep catching fire, generally in the back area. These were created in the LG Korea plant, and uh, it's been a bad year for LG. They've been having quite a few problems. Their home batteries are catching on fire. The Australia plant had some issues with uh, battery fires. All of the Kia vehicles in Korea to the tune of a 700 plus million dollar recall for them and an 800 million dollar recall for GM. The total per car value of this recall is stated to be over $11,000. That's gonna be the largest per unit recall of any vehicle anywhere ever. So. It may be uh, you know, less than some of the other recalls out there, <coughs> GM and your ignitions. However, they're taking care of it, they're fixing it. The fever pitch is pretty high right now because we're all early adopters with these vehicles as well as this is GM's future. They're trying to get everyone on board with EVs and electric vehicles moving forward. They got the Lyric coming out, they got the Hummer coming out. So they need to get this black eye out of their way and they're gonna do it. There's been a lot of speculation going on about replacing just similar or maybe some of the battery modules that are affected in the highest affected vehicles but no they're going to do it they're going to do it right hopefully we shall see this is kind of speculation at this point but we do have the recall notice we do have the advisory thank you to uh, some of the people out there that have been doing your diligent homework electric was speaking to a GM spokesperson and they were the ones that actually kind of gave us some of this information this week. So thank you for that. We know who you are and uh, we appreciate all the work that you've been doing to help us through this recall. Moving forward, we know which ones are going to be the most affected. Those are going to be the 2019s and the way that they're deciding which vehicles to actually repair is kind of interesting. They said that obviously the ones that are catching fire the most, which will be the 2019s and then moving down, 2018s, 2017s seem to be a little less affected. However, one of the other usages that they're uh, calculating this upon is going to be deep discharges through the OnStar system. So they're going to track vehicles that have had most discharges of their battery cycle and then back up to top just to make sure those people get their batteries first. Now, I don't know how that sounds to you folks out there, but to me, that sounds like if you've been a good driver and you don't use your vehicle very much, you're at the bottom of the list. I don't know if that seems right or not, but you know, let me know in the comments below whether you agree with that or not. Seems like a uh, an odd way to determine which vehicles to do a recall on first. However, that's their calculation, that's what they decided. So, as we move forward, for those of you out there that have a Chevy Bolt that is in the recall range, there's gonna be two letters going out. There's gonna be an advisory letter and a remedy letter. Now, for those that are in the highest area of concern, you will be getting a remedy letter. For those that are not, like myself, in the 2017 and 2018 range, now I don't wanna speak for your car, but check for your own VIN number. Call GM, the concierge number is listed in the description below. I might even put it up here, but call them. They're actually pretty helpful and uh, find out where your vehicle sits in that remedy slash advisory range. Now, the advisory people, they're gonna get a notice. 
the remedy people are going to get told to schedule an appointment with your dealership. No earlier than August 30th is when you can actually go in. They said as of August 23rd, you can start scheduling your appointments. They told through GM Dealer Connect the dealers not to schedule anything before August 30th, but that's probably, like I said in my previous video, the supply chain shortage. So with COVID, with the supply and chip shortage, we're seeing a back order of everything, everywhere, manufacturing. As we move forward, you're gonna start to see it getting fixed. This is a quick video. I just wanna let you guys know that, you know what? They're starting to work on it. As I said, the parts are starting to be shipped. They've probably halted a little bit of their production on their other cars to be able to accommodate for this. Again, speculation, but within one week of me getting my car just miraculously warrantied, uh, I had a high voltage battery contactor switch stuck open check engine light and I literally had my car at the dealership for a month with no information and then bam, they called me and they said, oh, your car's fixed. Within one week, now we get the remedy letter, now we get the advisory, now start scheduling all of the appointments for all the affected vehicles. So it's coming, folks. End of August, we're starting to see this. September, October, you're gonna start to get your vehicles fixed. So, as we move forward, keep a good attitude. Let's let Chevy fix this. I know that some people are upset. I am as well. It is a safety issue for us out there. However, they're not just gonna be able to miraculously uh, wave a wand and poop out 70,000 batteries. We know that this is not a uh, an easy thing for them to fix. In fact, if you remember, they had a 25,000 battery limit on what they could build, which is why they were only able to build that many vehicles at one time out of one plant. So. It's not like they can just simply make more batteries in a quicker manufacturing production line. They just don't have it. So they're waiting, they're fixing them, they're gonna probably stagger out the appointments, but it's coming. 50 to 70,000 of us, if you're looking for your vehicle to have the battery replaced, they don't make the 60 kilowatt batteries anymore, they only make the 64 kilowatt batteries. So you're gonna actually get slightly more range if you opt for the battery, as well as it's gonna come with the same eight year, 100,000 mile warranty. So you could have a vehicle that's at 99,000 miles and you just got a new battery, a brand new warranty. So folks, I think GM is trying to do right by this. They don't want this black eye any more than we do. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's all have a bit of patience. Let's continue not to drive these fireballs uh, to the ground and uh, you know, don't park them inside. As they said in the recall, uh, park it outside. Um, can't see it here but I have solar I park my car outside I'm able to charge during daylight hours as they recommend I don't feel like it's as much of a safety issue for me but I really don't want to put my kids in the car that much I don't want to catch a fire so I want an MSRP swap a new battery a buyback just like all of you folks out there there's actually three different options now so we're gonna get these fixed be patient if you have any questions hit me up in the comments below and if you get a moment please consider subscribing this is Johan, your host. I'll see you next time.